Chatterjee. Chapter 3. Our Environment. What is this our environment? So, in last class you studied about control and coordination. How you control your mind? How you can reflect any object? How our reflection actually takes place? Right? Yes. So, today we study our environment. So, environment. So, what is the meaning of environment generally? So, environment means the surroundings of our, our life. So, what we are here, the surrounding of our sides are called environment, right? Yes. So, first, the all organism as well as physical surroundings in surroundings interact with each other and maintains balance in nature. So, what is the meaning of environment? The all organisms, the what are all organisms such as plants, animals, birds, then insects, then worms, etc. So, these are all organisms. So, which are as well as physical surroundings. So, can we use the physical surroundings? Yeah, if I say that, the wind, then water, soil, air. So, these are physical surroundings, right? Yes. So, all living organisms as well as physical surroundings interact with each other. They always interact with each other, right? Yes. So, in the to maintain balance in nature. So, why they interact with each other? To maintain the balance in our nature. So, how it balance in the nature? So, always if you take any plant, right? It grows in soil, right? So, the soil helps to, to grow the plant. It gives food and it gives water to plant from the soil, right? So, soil, water, air, then light. So, these are physical surroundings which helps to grow living beings or living organisms. So, these are environment. So, main purpose of environment is the main thing the balance in nature. So, living organisms and physical surroundings helps to maintain the relationship between the them in nature. So, next is the ecosystems. So, what is ecosystems? The all the interacting organism, all the interacting organism in an area, they are together with non-living constituent of the environment form an ecosystem. So, similar this meaning, all the environment organisms, what are the organisms? Microorganisms, macroorganisms, then plant, animals, etc. Right? These organisms which are interacted with non-living constraints. The non-living constraint means like water, soil, etc. So they are interact with each other to make the form an ecosystem. What do they form? They will be forming ecosystems. Right? If I take an example as a fish. So fish. So imagine the fish in the aquarium. Right? So in aquarium, it's a non-living constituent, right? This is made up of a glass or glass, etc. So they put water. The water is also a non-living constituent. So fish live in water in aquariums. So after some day the water gets polluted. So what happened? The fish will be died due to the non-living constituent or water. So what happened when the fish died? So small bacteria or microorganisms they give it food from the decayed fish. So they get food from the decayed fish. So that way, that way they, be, they live their life. Right? So fish is taken in aquariums which contain with the water. So when fish is died and start to decay, they get the microorganisms like bacteria, fungus, they get the food from the decayed fish, then they grow their life. So this way they will form a convex ecosystems. Next, food chains and webs. So how food chains will be there? So how food chains will be there? I know that you studied in another class, like in your primary sections also. Right? So food chains. See the, the each the each step of the food chain form a trophic level. 
so what is this each step of the food chain so we are always in food chains so these are the each step we got trophic level the what is the first one first one we got is a producer the producers so what is the first producer autotrophs why that which one do we call as autotrophs plants right generally plants these are autotrophs they prepare food from the natural things so like plants they prepare food from the sunlight water and air carbon dioxide they prepare their own food so they were first they were first trophic level they were called first trophic level the second one are the primary consumer second one was called primary consumers which were the primary consumers primary consumers these are herbivores herbivores so the herbivores means they eat only vegetables vegetables which are prepared by the autotrophs right so they are herbivores these are pure vegetarians they are taking food from the autotrophs only so these are prime primary consumers so this is second trophic level the second trophic Yeah. Then third one is it? second secondary consumer. So first producer, then primary consumer, secondary consumers. So which one we call the secondary consumers? Yeah, third one is it? small carnivore. Small carnivore like some parrots or some frog, insects, right? They eat food from the they eat food of it as a herbivores. So yeah. like parrot they eat some worms right worms snakes eat frog so these are also small carnivores then last one is the tertiary carnivores the tertiary carnivores what are the tertiary carnivores are large carnivores large carnivores these are third trophic level okay the first one are the producers then second one is the primary consumers So, uh, then third one is secondary consumers and last one third tertiary consumers. Tertiary consumers large large carnivores. Which one? Animals like like lion, tiger, so etc. So these are the large carnivores. This way the food chain will be increased. Right. The green plants captures a one percent of energy from the sunlight. So how many energy they get? Only one percent of energy from the sunlight. How? By preparing food. For preparing food, by doing photosynthesis process, right? Which process? Photosynthesis. Synthesis. So green plants capture only one percent of the energy from the sunlight. So we study how energy get from the first producer to last tertiary tertiary consumers yes so green plants catch only 1% of the energy from the sun next what happened the ant energy average 10% energy gone from the food so how many percent of the energy we get so green plant get only 1% of energy from sunlight from there they prepare food right the animals or herbivores they get only 10% from the 1% of energy of sunlight they get only 10% of energy from the food food where we could get food from the plant green plant right no confusion listen carefully green plant produce one get 1% from the sunlight energy second the ant average average 10% energy got from the food which are prepared by the plant right next so little energy available for the next level of consumers so what happens if 1% of the food energy get from the producers then get they get only 10% when we reach the secondary class secondary consumers they go little amount right then further tertiary consumers they will get further little right so energy will be decreased when the consumer level get increased right so energy decreased when consumers increase so that's why the nature balance the non living constituents as well as the 